طب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان شاء الله today as we have uh, uh, mentioned before we will go through uh, a quick review uh, some uh, exercises that uh, I have collected from uh, chapters 4, 5 and 11 of course if you have any question after this we can uh, go through your uh, questions so first uh, Uh, the exercises for chapter 4. In chapter 4, just uh, as a quick reminder, we discussed uh, digital transmission, in which case we discussed the uh, transferring uh, digital signal over uh, the uh, using digital, uh, sorry, transferring digital bits using digital signal. So we just convert bits to digital signal and then we transfer the digital signal as is on the transmission uh, uh, medium. So uh, in which case we discussed the, uh, uh, the, 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 the baud rate or the, uh, uh, the change uh, for uh, the signal level per unit time. And of course, we discussed in that chapter the line coding schemes. Uh, for the line coding schemes, we classified or categorized the line coding schemes into uh, unipolar, polar, and uh, bipolar, and then multi-level and multi-transition. We talked about Uh, all these techniques and the pros and cons for each technique. Then we talked about uh, uh, block coding uh, as a, a way to improve the error probability and self-synchronization for the signal. And then we finally we talked about uh, scrambling, uh, which tries to achieve the same objective like block coding, but without uh, uh, incurring or increasing uh, the overhead. So, uh, so in this uh, exercise here, we are asked to Uh, uh, draw the graph of the uh, 2B1Q uh, scheme using each of the following data streams. We have four dat uh, data uh, patterns that we want to convert uh, to uh, the 2B1Q uh, line coding scheme. Uh, assuming that the last signal level has been positive. The last signal level has been positive. And we'll talk about why we have this assumption. From the graphs, Guess the bandwidth, the bandwidth for uh, this scheme using the average number of changes in the signal level. So that's very specific because that's, uh, that's slightly different from what we have discussed in class. So, so first, uh, of course, the 2B1Q, we're talking about uh, uh, converting each two bits. That's why you have each two bits here uh, to one, so two bits to one signal uh, uh, element. Okay. Um, so... Uh, so the, the first thing that you should do here is to, uh, is to write the lookup table where we convert the, uh, the, the, the each bit pattern into a, a signal level. So this is very important. So we start with the lookup table here. So uh, uh, for the bits, we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. And then one one. These are the four uh, uh, combinations that we have for converting each two bits to a signal level. And uh, here we can put any uh, signal levels. So uh, for so for, for for example, we'll put uh, plus one, plus three, and then uh, uh, negative one and negative three. Of course, we discussed in the class that we have some uh, uh, inversion as part of the 2B1Q. So this is when the previous level is positive. And this is when the previous level is, a, is negative. So when the previous level is negative, this is very important. So, so if you put any level here, it doesn't matter. But for the inversion, you have to make sure that you, you invert everything. So it becomes minus 1, minus 3, and then plus 1, plus 3. Okay, all right. So, so this is already I mean, the 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 whole grade is is just uh, is, is 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 you got the whole grade just by doing this. Ahmed, do you have any question? Uh, I see you raising your hand. Yeah, I mean, if you yeah, I mean, the idea here is that if you put here, for example, plus three. Plus one, minus three. If you change anything here, it's fine with me. As long as this one is the exact inversion. Yes, yes. So if you change any of these, it's fine with me. But here, it has to be the inversion. 
okay? Tai. So, uh, so for the straight zeros, so the straight zeros, for the straight zeros, it's positive. And as long as it's positive, we will always be looking at this column. So positive one, so it's actually a, it's positive one, and then positive one all the way. Okay, so that's that's simple. So let's see for uh, 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 for ones for all ones for the case B, for all ones we have a minus three. For all ones we have minus three, so which means that we are somewhere here. Okay. Since we are, uh, since we have the uh, uh, this level uh, negative, so we'll we'll go to this level for the next uh, bit pattern. So one one, we have to take one one from the from this column now, because this level is negative. Okay, which means that the next voltage level is a is plus three. So we have to go plus three. Okay. Since we are positive, we go back to this column. So 1, 1 is minus 3. Okay? And then, of course, plus 3. And then minus 3. So we keep doing that. And this is what we have mentioned regarding the inversion. The good thing about the inversion is that it solves the, uh, 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 the self-synchronization issue at least for 50% of the time, because if we have uh, straight zeros or straight ones, if we don't have this inversion, what we will end up having is a, a fixed voltage level. For fixed voltage level, as we have discussed, we don't have any voltage level change, in which case the self-synchronization will vanish. We will not have any kind of, of self-synchronization. So by having this inversion column, we can solve the uh, 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 the the self synchronization at least fifty percent of uh, 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 the time, right? So for the case of zero one, for zero one now we have three, as long as we have a positive voltage, so that's easy. So we'll end up having bardo a fixed voltage level all the way through. Okay, so this is plus three, and this is plus one. For this case, ba, we have 0, 0, and then 1, 1. For 0, 0, we have positive, positive 1, so we'll, have, we'll, we'll be here. Since we are positive, we'll keep looking at the first column. 1, 1 becomes negative 3, so 1, 1 is a negative 3 here. Okay. Since we are negative, then we have to, a, to switch to the other column. For the other column, we have 0, 0, which becomes minus 1 which is this one, right? So the 0, 0 next will be minus 1. And then since we are still negative, we will still look at this column, right? So 1, 1 becomes a positive 3. So we will go positive 3, okay? And now we are positive, so we'll switch to this column. We'll switch to the first column, okay? 0, 0 for the first column becomes plus 1. We are still positive, so we'll keep looking at the first column. 1, 1 becomes minus 3. Okay. And now we are negative, so we'll look at the second column. 0, 0 in the second column is minus 1, so we'll, we'll be like this. Okay. And then we're still negative, so we'll still look at the second column. 1, 1 becomes a positive 3. Okay. All right. So that's how it looks like. Uh, right. So now, ba, we 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 solve the uh, the second part of the question, which is very interesting. So what we have discussed in class is that the uh, 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 the the bandwidth or the signal rate equals to e bash of c, which is the case factor, right? Times n times one over r. What's r? Hmm? R is E. What's R here? I had them to go. Two. R is two. Right. Because we have two bits will be converted to a voltage level. So R is two. That's easy. And usually I would give you C. Okay. 
and C is يعني in many cases it's a it's half one over two so this this uh, will be roughly n over four okay I didn't give you n here I didn't give you n so I want you to to estimate the bandwidth as a function of n all right because I did not give you n n I did not tell you that you have 16 bits per second, which is n. I didn't tell you the time duration that these bits are uh, uh, transferred, when these bits are transferred. So I didn't give you exactly n, right? So here, by, we, we don't have C. C, by the way, in, in practice, is estimated based on statistical measures. So we have to try all the possible a bit combination, okay, and take the probability of sending any bit pattern, and then we come up with C. Of course, we, we will not have to do that as part of the course. Here, by this question, I'm asking you to do something totally different. I'm asking you to estimate the bandwidth based only, based only on these four bit patterns. Only on these four bit patterns, based on a the the signal change. So here, uh, we have to go back to the original definition of the signal rate or the baud rate. The baud rate measures the change of the voltage level per unit time. Okay, per unit time. This is actually the signal rate, which is a, which is S. So we have to calculate the uh, the, the change, okay, of the voltage level per unit time from these four cases only. Okay, these are the cases that we have. So in that case, we have to calculate first, يعني, we have to calculate the average number of voltage level change, the average number of voltage level change from these four cases. So the, the number of voltage level change equals to what is the number of voltage level change in case number one, ya shabab? Zero, bravo, hello, quiz. For the second case, no, la for the case B, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. If you put it eight, assuming that the previous one was positive, I will I will let it go. There's no problem here. But see, accurately, it's seven. Okay, for case three, for case C, يعني, it's zero, واضح. And for case four, is again, let's let's cal let's uh, count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. برضو seven. Okay. So this is the total number of changes for these four cases. Of course, we have to get the average, so we have to eh, divide by four. Right, so this is the average number of changes based on these four cases. Right, type this average number of levels is based on the fact that we have a we have how many bits here? 16 bits, 16 bits, right? So, but we have to estimate this number of changes or the, the, the number of change per unit time. Per unit time, and as a function of n, right? So what is the relationship between n and these 16 bits? So what we would do is that we will say, okay, so the, since since this number of changes is for 16 bits, so the number of changes per bit, the number of changes per bit is to divide all of this by 16. Okay? So this is the number of changes per bit based on these four cases. Okay? So, so for any n, for any n, it becomes a, so s, s here becomes, s becomes n multiplied by all of this. Lower eva, lower 14 divided by 4 times 16. 14 lohomadol divided by 4 times 16. So this is the actual 
So, يعني this is the إيه؟ the, the average change per unit time, okay, for any M, given those four cases only. So, the, again, the way we calculate this is to calculate the total number of changes, and then we divide it by four for the number of cases, okay? Since each of these cases, they have 16 bits, so we have to uh, get the average number of changes per bit, and then we multiply it by the number of bits per second, the number of bits per second, which is N. So we get the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, signal rate per unit time. Any question here? So this is a little bit different from what we discussed in class. And this, uh, uh, this actually is uh, uh, a question that, uh, that's in the book. And this is the way we calculate it. Any question? Uh, so for line coding schemes, we said that there are some pros and cons. We have the, 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 uh, some phenomena, very important phenomena, that like base, uh, baseline wandering, like DC component, like lack of surface synchronization, and so on. Right, so for for some specific uh, line coding schemes, we said that because they are very simple and they are bandwidth efficient, so we will introduce uh, uh, something like block coding. So block coding gets introduced to uh, any line coding scheme to improve the error probability and the self synchronization, right? And then we said that uh, what is what is the disadvantage for uh, block coding? Can had fakir? What is the disadvantage for block coding? Yeah, extra overhead, so we need to add bits. So we have to convert each four bits, مثلا, to five bits, which means that we have to add some overhead. So in order to solve the problem of self-synchronization and error probability, we have to, eat, to add some overhead. And we said that scrambling, scrambling techniques, they try to solve the same problem, but without adding an overhead. But of course, that comes with some a little bit of more uh, uh, complexity. So here, this example talks about scrambling technique so we we have discussed in class two scrambling uh, scrambling technique this one uh, the one uh, implemented in north america and this one is the one implemented in europe so for b8zs we have to convert each eight consecutive zeros and of course these line coding schemes as we as we said uh, before we have to a we have to assume a specific line coding scheme okay they are not agnostic to the line coding scheme unlike Block coding. Block coding can be applied to any uh, uh, line coding scheme. For scrambling, we have to uh, design a specific scrambling technique for each line coding scheme. So the two that we have discussed in class are specifically designed for the line coding scheme called alternate mark inversion. Okay. So for this uh, alternate mark in, uh, inversion technique. It's very simple. The, the, what we have uh, said is that the zero is mapped to zero voltage, right? And the one is bipolar. It, it gets switched from uh, 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 plus voltage to minus voltage, plus voltage to minus. That's why it's called the alternate mark inversion, because the one gets A inverted. And the good thing about the AMI is that it's very bandwidth efficient. It's simple, of course. And because the zero is mapped to zero voltage, there's no DC component. That's good. However, still, for zero voltage for uh, zero voltage for a long period of time, this A causes lack of self synchronization, right? Type. So we will introduce scrambling to the AMI to try to solve the issue of self synchronization. Hence, of course. Uh, 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 enhance their error recovery or error uh, probability. Type. So the way that we apply the scrambling is that we take for for the case for case A, we take each consecutive eight zeros, and then we substitute each consecutive eight zeros to a specific pattern, right? Which we called it. Had fakir? Zero, 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 and then violate, and then bipolar, and then zero, and then violate, and then bipolar. Okay? So, to do this, 
here we say that assume that the last non-zero signal uh, uh, level has been positive. Okay, the last non-zero voltage that has been positive. So what is so this one now is converted to what voltage level? Negative. Okay. So negative one. So negative one. Negative one, negative two, negative three. It doesn't matter because we have only a, a, a two voltage levels other than uh, zero. So the first one is negative because the last signal was positive. And then the other one is a is positive, and then the other one is a is negative. Until now, everything is fine, and we are following AMI. Now we have eight consecutive zeros, so we have to substitute the eight consecutive zeros using the A, the scrambling technique. So this pattern will be a first we'll have zero, 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 and then violate. Violate means what, Yashabab? Violate means the voltage level should be positive or negative? Negative, bravo alaik, because it's violate. This is V. Okay, and then bipolar. Bipolar means it's it's the opposite, and then zero. Okay, and then again violate. So this is B, and then this is a violate. Violate means that you keep the voltage level like the one before it. And the idea of violate is to a to indicate to the receiver that be aware that this is not the normal mapping of AMI. This is actually scrambling, right? And then E. And then B, and that's it. So what happens for the, th uh, the the other three consecutive zeros? They are not eight consecutive zeros. So we have to go back to the e, to the normal mapping of AMI. So in that case, it would be the normal mapping of AMI is marked as blackout. So the red part is the e, is the substitution uh, related to scrambling. Type. Uh, <clears throat> so now the HDV3 uh, is more conservative. It actually maps uh, each four zeros, not eight. And we have two cases. For the first case, we map if we have the number of non zero uh, voltage levels before it is odd. In that case, we have odd. Change so we have zero 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 and then violate. Okay. If the number of non-zero voltage level before it is even, okay, then it becomes B zero zero violate. Okay. Type. So now so we 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 go here and the, and now we we uh, uh, we do the same so we have positive negative and then positive and then negative right and then we have to convert by these four zero bits okay all right so now what is the number of non zero pulses including including 111 is odd okay so it's odd so we go here. So it becomes zero, 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 and then violate. So this is violate. Okay, type. So now we have another four zero bits. What is the number of uh, uh, non-zero pulses here? It's zero. Zero is eight. Is even. So we go here. So now we go bipolar and then zero, zero, and then violate. And now the, the scrambling is done, so we go back to the normal AMI sequence. So this is the so this is the scrambling effect. Okay, any question in this part? The first three ones is normal AMI mapping. So uh, the first three ones for AMI, what we do is that the one, okay, the one 
uh, goes one uh, one time uh, positive voltage and one time negative voltage depending on the uh, on the uh, on the non zero voltage before it so i told you here that the non zero voltage before it was a was positive so the first one here becomes negative okay and since this is negative the one after it becomes positive since this is positive the one after it is negative so the alternate mark inversion goes a positive negative for the one zero is zero okay but here we will replace the zero voltage level with the scrambling technique ماشي واضح i assume it's easy so now we uh, yes sultan تفضل طيب for analog transmission as we said that now but we will transfer the digital bits on top of a analog signal so we will convert the digital bits to analog signal in which case we talk about here by broadband communication so here we talk about broadband communication and now we we discuss the uh, the bandwidth as a 1 plus d times s and s is a n times 1 over r so this is the a. So instead of C, the case factor now becomes 1 plus D because here we're talking about the filtering effect. Okay. Here, of course, uh, we discussed the issue of uh, analog uh, 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 or uh, ASK, amplitude shift keying, uh, uh, PSK or phase shift keying, and uh, frequency shift keying or FSK, right? We also talked about the QAM modulation. So here we talk about the constellation diagram. So this example here talks about the constellation diagram in four cases. So for the first case, we need to draw the constellation diagram for amplitude shift key. For amplitude shift keying, now we change the amplitude. So, so the, the zero uh, uh, takes a specific amplitude for the sine wave, okay? And the one takes the same sound wave, but a with a bigger amplitude. Okay, so that's how we convert the digital bits to analog signal. So here, the phase of all the sine waves is zero. So in that case, for the IQ diagram, we always keep ourselves to a to the a to the i axis or to the x axis. Yeah. So here, I'm telling you that you have uh, uh, zero and one, and the zero will have a peak amplitude of 1, and the 1 will have a peak amplitude of 3. So it becomes like this. So the, you have one symbol here, and one symbol here. That's it. So this is ASK. And the phase is always 0. Okay. So we always convert to sine wave, but the amplitude is the, is the parameter that we change. For case B, we're talking about uh, BPSK. BPSK we uh, again we fix the amplitude so in that case the amplitude is fixed that's why i give you one amplitude here because the amplitude for both symbols is the same it's two but we we change the phase right so when we change the phase since we're talking about binary so the phase has to be a 180 degrees difference okay so whether you uh, and, and it's two so it's one two here so it's here if you want to put it here, it's fine. If you want to put it like this, it's also fine. Either or, huh? not both, طبعا. either or. Yamal black or, or the red. Okay. The, the most important thing is that the, the phase shift between this or the phase shift between those two symbols is, a, is 180 degrees. This is the most important thing. Okay. Type. So here, most importantly, the amplitude is the same. For PSK, amplitude is always the same for all symbols. And we just a, change the, the amplitude only. Sorry, we just change the phase only. So the amplitude is always the same and we change the phase only. Okay? For ASK, it's the other way around. We change the amplitude, but the phase stays zero. For KC, we have QPSK, quadrature phase shift key. So in that case, we have to divide the, uh, the IQ diagram into four 
okay, symbols, okay, and the angle between the four symbols has to be has to be a uh, pi over two or ninety degrees. So again, if you start, if you want to start from zero and the amplitude is three, so it becomes one, two, three. So here, here, and here, and here. That's fine. Or if you want to do it this way, it's also fine. You, you, you do it like this. Both are fine. Okay? For a case, for, for, for the black one, so this is 3. Right? So the amplitude is always from 0. From the 0 origin. For the red one, this is 3. Right? So the, the, the amplitude is always from the from the origin. So if I tell you, for example, a psk, okay, so you will you will add more symbols in such a way that you will divide the 360 degrees by eight, okay, but the amplitude for all the symbols will be the same. The amplitude for all the symbols, so it will be like a circle. So the, the, the PSK always forms a circle in the IQ diagram because the amplitude is always fixed and you can put as many symbols as you want on this circle, okay? So you divide the 380 degrees <clears throat> in a form of a circle and you keep adding symbols as you want. So let's talk about that 8 QAM. 8 QAM is interesting because QAM is quadrature amplitude modulation. So it changes both the amplitude and the phase. It changes both the amplitude and the phase. Okay? So it has two amplitudes. So it's as if we have two QPSK, one at, at an amplitude of one, and the other one is at amplitude of three. Okay? So, the first QPSK <coughs> will be like like this. So it's it's one. So it's it's it, it's gonna be here, 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 and then the other one will be three. So it will be something like this. Okay. So these are the eight symbols that we have so for this one this one is one and this one is a e, is three so if you want to shift this 45 degrees and start from the uh, 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 the x-axis it's also fine as long as most importantly this this angle has to be a 90 degrees okay so if you want to rotate this shape to the x-axis, it's perfectly fine. Okay? The most important question here, Ba'a, if we have if we have eight PSK and we have eight QAM. Okay. So what is the difference here? So did we introduce 8 QAM, for compared to 8 PSK to improve the bandwidth efficiency? The question is, 8 PSK and 8 QAM, is 8 QAM more efficient compared to 8 PSK in terms of bandwidth? Or do they have the same bandwidth? Hmm. Of course, why? No. So remember, the bandwidth is a bandwidth is. 1 plus d times s, and s is n times 1 over r. So the question becomes, really, 
D is is D is the same for both because D is the is 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 the uh, filtering effect. Okay, so assume that D is the same, of course, for both cases. So the it all comes down to. Do these two techniques they have the same R or not? The answer is yes, they have the same R, right? So they have the same R, so they have the same bandwidth. Okay, so the APSK and 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 eight quam. Okay, here you have eight different symbols. Eight different symbols, mana. 2 to the power 3. We map each 3 bits to a symbol. Okay, we map each 3 bits to a symbol. That's why we have 8 different symbols. Right? And this is valid for both cases, which means that R is 3 for both cases. Okay? And since D is the same, so we have the same bandwidth. Type. The question is that why did we introduce 8 quam? What is the main advantage of 8 quam over 8 PSK? Risk. Yes. Yes. The, the, the idea here is that 8 PSK, we will have to, a, to form the 8 symbols in a circle. By increasing the number of, uh, of symbols within a circle, on the circle, right? So the distances between the symbols will start to get a closer and closer to each other. So it will become very prone to noise. Okay? The 8 quam or X quam will allow us to have extra degree of freedom. So we change both the amplitude and the phase, which means we can have bigger distance, larger distances between the symbols, okay? Each two symbols will have larger distance because we have more degrees of freedom to uh, uh, allocate the symbols in the IQ diagram, in which case the uh, 8 quam becomes more resistive to noise, right? But in terms of bandwidth, they are the same. Any question on this part? Clear? Okay, so in this graph here, I need to uh, uh, allocate 1024 different dots, okay, using different uh, amplitudes and different uh, phase and so on. You need to allocate here 1000 type. Uh, here, by an example, a corporation has a medium with a bandwidth of 1 megahertz. So this company had a bandwidth of one megahertz, okay? Uh, and uh, the corporation needs to create 10 separate independent channels. So it wants to divide this into 10 different channels, okay? So each channel is a, each of these channels is a, what is the bandwidth for each channel? 100 kilohertz, right? Type. So the company by now has decided to use QAM technology. Okay? So what is the minimum number of bits per baud? What is this bits per baud? Yani what is the number of bits that need to be mapped to a symbol? Bits per baud. What is the number of bits that needs to be mapped to a symbol? Okay. This is a In the definition of the bandwidth, this is a. R. Yes. So this is basically R. Okay. So the question becomes what is R? so that we achieve a, a, a bit rate per channel equal to one megabits per second. So for each channel, we need to have, we need to achieve 
uh, 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 n يعني bit rate of 1 megabits per second. So let's put the definition of the bandwidth. So the bandwidth, the bandwidth for one channel is a. So let's put the definition in a symbol here. What well, one plus d times s and s is a n times one over r. Okay. So now the unknown here is r. Okay. So let's see if we have. Do we have n? Yes, n is a. So we need to achieve this bit rate. So n is uh, one uh, megabits per second. Okay. Type d. I'm telling you d is zero, right? And what is the bandwidth here? It's a ten. Uh, sorry, one hundred kilohertz. Okay. So r to so r. So r is a is n, which is 10 to the power 6, divided by 10, uh, 100, 100 uh, times 10 to the power 3, which is a 10. So R is 10. So this means that each 8 bits will be converted to a symbol. Okay, right? So what is the number of points in the constellation diagram? L. L is a what is the number of symbols that we need? Hmm? Yeah, yeah. I just need someone else to, <laughs> to 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 say that. So, the number of symbols, which means that, by the way, here, when it comes to bandwidth, if I if I change this to PSK, there's nothing different. Because in terms of bandwidth, QAM and PSK, they are both the same, as I said, right? So if I change this question and put here, here PSK, it's, it's perfectly the same. Because here we're not talking about uh, 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 error rate. And luckily, we're not talking about how to estimate the error rate for all these schemes, because it's very complicated, right? So for PSK or for uh, quam, I need to convert each bit to a symbol, which means how many symbols do I need? 2 to the power 10. So 1024. So I need 1024 quam. Okay. For each channel, in order to have the channel with 100 kilohertz to achieve. A bit rate of one megabits per second. So I need 1024 quam, which means that I need in this 24 symbols. Mexica? Type. In chapter 11, we talked about data link control. In data link control, we divided the chapter into uh, 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 two different, yani high level parts. The, the, the first part talks about Framing, which is the first job of the data link control. For framing, we talked about a bit stuffing and byte stuffing and so on. And in the second part, we talked about the uh, uh, the uh, error uh, control and flow control. Error and flow control. So for error and flow control, we talked about uh, different uh, 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 error and flow control techniques, right? Starting from when the uh, we expect no. Uh, errors on the channel, which means that we don't need ARQ, right? Automatic repeat request. So the channel is perfect. We're not uh, uh, expecting any error to happen, neither to the frame nor to the uh, to the acknowledgement. In which case, we talked about the simplest algorithm or the simplest scheme, and we talked about the uh, the stop and wait without ARQ. And then we discussed the uh, uh, the case when the channel is uh, is noisy, in which case we expect errors to happen. When we expect errors to happen, our tool we have to use ARQ, and ARQ has to come with uh, uh, three different events because we have to account for uh, the timeout. The timeout is when the uh, the frame is lost or when the acknowledgement is lost. In which case we wait for a certain time and then we assume that there was an error and we have to retransmit. So in the first uh, uh, exercise here, we are asked to fill the blank in this case where we have 
as top and weight ARQ. If I remove this ARQ, the question becomes يعني, significantly simpler, of course, because here, without ARQ, I don't have to keep a copy. I don't have to assume that there is any possibility for retransmission. I don't have to, eat, to do many things. But here we are asked to fill <clears throat> the blank when we have uh, automatic repeat request, which means that the channel has some probability of error. So we have two nodes, A and B, over one megabits per second link. Okay, so the bit rate here is one megabits per second. If each packet carries 1,000 bits okay, of data and the receiver is, so we have here, we have A and we have B and the link between them is 5,000 5, kilometers. Okay, and this link has a, a bit rate or a bandwidth of 1 megabits per second. Okay. And of course, the speed of propagation is 2 times 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Of course, from, oh, and of course the, 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 the frame is, is 1,000 bits. Of course, from these two, we calculate A, and from these two, calculate what, what do we need to calculate here? The transmission time and the propagation time. So we ignore all the waiting and processing delays. This is يعني, just to, to make it a little bit simpler. So here, the, the, uh, uh, the, we have to calculate the transmission delay. Of course, we are not asked yet to do it, but let's, let, let's do it because it's in the second part. So the transmission delay is simply the, the length of the, uh, of the frame divided by the bandwidth, which is 1 megabits per second. So this is a 1 millisecond, right? The propagation delay is distance, the distance, which is 5,000 kilometers, divided by the speed, which is 2 times 10 to the power 8. Okay? Okay? So it's, uh, this one is uh, 50 times, so it's 25 milliseconds. Which means that the propagation delay is very significant. That's, of course, because 500, 5,000 kilometers is, is too long. Okay? So this is like an undermarine cable or something. So in the first part, we are asked to fill the missing lines for the sender to process the request to send event as shown below. So, of course, we have some initialization and then we have the event. So we are asked to fill the missing blanks in one event. And this event is a is request to send and it's as at the sender. So we have to localize by where, where you are asked to uh, fill this uh, missing lines. So we are at the sender, and we are at the request to send. The request to send is coming from the upper layer, right? From the network layer. So when we receive a frame from the network layer, okay? So what do we need to do other than we, we get the data? So once we get the data, then we have to do uh, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six different uh, 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 instructions, okay, to complete the uh, the processing of that event. So of course we have uh, we have to have a sequence number. Why? As we said, for stop and wait, we have to have a sequence number because if uh, uh, the if we have A and B, if A tries to send the frame. And the frame arrives to B, okay, and B sends the acknowledgement, and the acknowledgement got lost, right? So of course B, uh, sorry A, will send the frame again, the same frame, okay? So B here needs to know whether this frame is a new frame or a duplicate frame. That's why we said that we need two sequence numbers only, and that's valid because the uh, uh, stop and wait. Is actually a special case of go back and when the window size is one right that's why we need two sequence numbers right so we always need one more sequence number 
uh, uh, bigger than the the window size. So the window size for stop and wait is one. So we need two sequence numbers. So here, the first thing we have to do is that we have to, of course, make a frame. So make frame. So this refers to the first part of the chapter where we have to make a frame. Of course, make frame, we have to put the sequence number, right? Because as we said, we need to, when we send the frame to B, B needs to have a way to figure out whether this frame is actually a new frame or a duplicate frame. Type. After this, what do we do? We can send right away, but as we said before, since we're talking about ARQ, so there is a possibility of retransmission, right? So before, so to 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 support the possibility of retransmission, we have to keep a copy of the frame. So we have to store frame. Okay. Then خلاص, once we do this, we can send the frame. Send frame as well. Okay. And now بقى, we have three other things we have to do. Okay. We have three other steps that we have to do. So what are they بقى? Hmm? فكر. Bravo, Alex. So again, so we, we when we send a frame, we cannot wait forever. So we have to start timing. Okay. So I have to put S N here. Do I? Do I have to put an S N here? Yes or no? It's just, a, yeah, it's, it's one timer. As we said, what is the, the only exception that we need to start a timer per frame is for the case of selective repeat. But for the case of stop and wait and uh, uh, go back in, okay, so whenever I have a window technique and whenever we have ordered uh, uh, delivery of frames, we use one timer only for the entire uh, window. Right, so I don't have to put SN for the timer. Okay, type. What else? I need, of course, to increment SN. So SN becomes SN plus one, and this is a. This is modulo. Two. Addition or increment, which means that SN will be zero and then one and then zero and then one and then zero and then one and so on. Okay, because we only need two sequence numbers, as we said. Type. What is the ma the missing step here, ba? Hadam hmm? lahaz a next only step that's missing here. So remember, whenever I have a window, a window technique, whether it's one or more, okay, I have to make sure that the incoming frame, okay has to be within the window okay so this is already achieved when we said the can send has to be true so there is a flag can send has to be true okay so in order to make sure that the next frame okay will only be transmitted only when i receive the acknowledgement i have to set here the can send a, I have to set can send to a to false. Why? Because if I set it, if, 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 if so, if can send is false, when I receive another frame from the, uh, uh, the, the network layer, right, the can send is false, so I cannot process that event. When can I process that event? After I receive the acknowledgement. So, which is not part of this event. It's it's the arrival notification. So there is another event called arrival notification where when we receive the acknowledgement, we, we go back to setting this can send to true in order to allow 
for receiving another trade. واضح كده؟ So this is the first part of the question. Here, each frame has 1,000 bits, right? The transmission time here is a, is one millisecond, and the propagation time is 25 milliseconds. Now, assuming that we have 20% of the frames or acknowledgement packets get lost. So for us, remember, if, if, the, if the frame gets lost or the acknowledgement gets lost, for both cases, I have to retransmit, right? I have no other uh, way. So, but we want to a, we want to calculate how long does it take to send 1 million bits of data. So in order to visualize this, this is very important. In order to visualize this, so we have we have A, okay. So this is the timing diagram. So this is time, right? And this is uh, this is A. This is B, right? So A has how many frames? So let's see. We have one million bits, and each frame length is A is 1000 bits that's from the so how many frames do we have here so number of frames is a is 1000 okay so a will have 1000 frames to send okay so first a will a will will take the first frame and will transmit it once once it transmits this frame this frame takes how long to be transmitted one millisecond we said right right so we take one millisecond to finish transmitting that uh, that frame once we finish transmitting that frame the frame becomes a signal and the sig which is a digital signal bow or analog signal we don't care and then this signal will propagate using the A, the propagation speed to B. Okay? Which takes A another 25 millisecond. Okay? Type. What happens? This is frame zero. What happens to frame one? Frame one will have to wait until another acknowledgement comes. And only here I can start transmitting frame 1 so this is frame 0 and this is frame 1 okay so the whole cycle has to happen for each frame type here i have to tell you here that what what is the transmission time for the acknowledgement i, I really don't know because the trans the acknowledgement acknowledgement is a frame okay that has no data Right, so I have to tell you here just for, uh, uh, يعني, uh, for correctness, يعني, for completeness, يعني, I have to tell you ignore all the transmission time for the headers, and the acknowledgement is just a header, okay, which means that we will assume that the transmission time for the acknowledgement is zero. So only the propagation time has to be accounted for. So this is the propagation time for the acknowledgement, this is for the frame. Okay? Right, Keda? So that's how it works for the case of uh, stop and wait. Type. We want to calculate by e the total number of times. So remember how many frames, number of frames, okay, that we have to send after يعني, our, 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 our accounting for error hmm. so we said that 20% of the frames they get lost so actually how many number of frames I need to send one thousand times one point two Point two deal here accounts for the twenty percent. It becomes one thousand two hundred, exactly one thousand two hundred frames. So for each of these frames, so the total time becomes a 
100, 1,200 times the whole cycle for one frame, which is 1 plus 25 plus 25. So this is the transmission time for the frame, propagation time for the frame, and propagation time for the acknowledgement. Okay, so 51 times 8, the 1,200. Okay, well, here. So this is simply the total time. So the last part here talks about that, repeating the same exercise, but this time we have to do it for, for the case of go back in, okay, when the window size is 7. So let's try to do the same thing that we did here for the case of go back in, just to, to be able to visualize exactly what happens in each case. So this is A, and this is B, okay? So A, again, has the 1,000 frames. They are coming one after the other, okay? So we have frame 0, 1, 2, and so on, right? So what will happen differently here is that we will take frame 0, we will transmit it, okay? So this is frame 0. Once I transfer frame 0, it becomes a signal that will propagate, okay? Do I wait? Of course not. In that case, I will send frame 1. So I will transmit frame 1 like this. And where is frame 0? Frame 0 is, a, is, is propagating still, okay? And then I will do 2, and then 1, and then 0 here. Okay, I will do the same until a frame 6, okay, so frame 5 and so on, up to frame 0, all of them are propagated. Then after frame 6, I will have to wait, because the window size is a, is 7. So after sending 7 frames, then and only then, I will wait for the acknowledge. So the most important thing here is to notice that transmission time always have, has to be accounted for for all the frames. Transmission time is per frame. Okay? Propagation time is one for the entire window because all of them will propagate at the same time. Let's try to talk about an example from real life. So from real life, imagine that you have you have cars, مثلا, going to the highway, and in the highway there is a gate in the highway, okay? And cars are coming one after the other, okay? And they are trying to get to the highway. So first they have to go to the, to the booth where they have to pay some money. So this, this time that they have to pay some money is the service time, right? Which is the one millisecond, okay? So each car will have to wait one millisecond to pay money before it gets to the highway. Once it gets to the beginning of the highway, I can service the next car, and I can service the third car, and the fourth car, and the, the fifth car, and so on. And then all the seven cars, they will go as one caravan through the, to the highway, I mean, 5,000 kilometers by, I mean, 5,000, the highway is 5,000 kilometers. Okay? So, the propagation time happens for all the frames in the window. And then I have, after sending all the seven frames, I have to wait for one acknowledgement. And as we said, acknowledgement is cumulative, right? So even if I lose six different acknowledgements, okay, the seventh one overrides all the, uh, uh, all the, all the frames. So the most important thing here is to note is that transmission time has to be per frame, propagation time for the entire window. Well, okay. So here, I have to work on the level of the window. So I have to say, okay, so what is the number of windows? What is the number of windows here? We have 1,000 frames, okay, and we have to divide them by 7, so these are the number of windows that I have to eat, uh, 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 to use 
as part of the go back end. Type. What is the number of windows accounting for error? Remember that here is very important. When an error happens, when an error happens for the go back end, I have to go back from the beginning of the window and, and retransmit everything. Okay? So if an error happens, I have to, uh, because this part here talks about we have 20% of the frames are lost. So we will assume here, of course, that each frame that's lost is lost in a separate window, in which case we have uh, 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 two, sorry, we have 20% of the windows, they will have one frame at least is lost. When the frame is lost, I have to uh, uh, retransmit the entire window, right? Which means here that the number of windows after accounting for error is a is 1000 divided by 7 times 1.2. Okay? And now, what is the, to the time, the time, the total time per window? The total time per window is a we have each window is seven frames, okay? So we have to multiply seven times one. So the transmission time has to be accounted for for every frame in the window, right? Plus one propagation time for all the frames plus one propagation time for the, uh, for the acknowledgement to, to go all the way back. Okay, so that the total time per window is 57 milliseconds. So what is that, the total time for 1 million bits equals a 57 times the number of windows, 1,000 divided by 7 times 1.2. Okay. Any questions, uh, So it's very important to notice here that for the case of go back n, uh, always yani, as a rule yani, the, the transmission time is per frame, the propagation happens for the entire window. Uh, for, 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 uh, for a stop and wait, the window size is already one, okay? So the, uh, the, 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 the propagation has to happen for each frame, whereas for go back n, the uh, the propagation time is for the entire window. Yes, Daniel. Uh, uh, yes, the acknowledgement here happens once per window, assuming that the acknowledgement is is cumulative. Ah, yes, yes, of course, of course, in which case we will slide the window. Yes. Uh, actually, the total time will decrease, not increase. If you have, uh, if you have, uh, if you receive acknowledgements uh, regularly, the total time will actually decrease, not increase. Because here, if there is an error, we have to always we have to always repeat the entire window. Okay, if the window is uh, is is sliding regularly, the number of retransmissions that you have to do is less is is, is a little bit less. In in which case the uh, the total time will be uh, decreased a little bit. But the, Yes, for the selective repeat, ba, it it will be <coughs> for the for 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 selective repeat. There is an assignment uh, for there is a question in the in the assignment. Uh, it's in the book. What will happen here is that for selective repeat, we have to uh, 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 first we have to make sure that the uh, the the retransmission happens per frame. 
okay so in that case we will do the total transmission time for the window similar to here right but when when there is an error okay we repeat only one frame right which means that the number of frames repeated here is 200 frames which is 20 percent of the frames 200 frames okay when there is an error i don't have to go back from the beginning of the window and retransmit the entire window Maybe? this is the main difference So let me just. Uh... Any other questions, Ashabab? Of course, here, but the one thing we we need to notice here is that what is the what is the actual good put for for the two cases? The actual good put is actually the number of frames. يعني إحنا we we need to calculate the amount of bits that we send. Okay. For the for the actual for per second, صح? Right. So, in within the time of one millisecond, and then twenty five propagation, and then twenty five propagation. فعليا how many bits did we send? One thousand bits. Okay. So the actual good put. Is in fact 1,000 bits divided by the entire time we spend to transmit or to 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 to, fale, and yeah, to actually transmit this 1,000 bits. Low 51 millisecond. Okay. So this is the actual good put. Here in the uh, in go back in. It's time seven atul. We have to multiply this by seven atul because we send seven frames in the same twenty-five in the same sorry twenty. Here now, about fifty-seven milliseconds. So in fifty-seven milliseconds, we send seven thousand bits. So it becomes here about seven thousand bits divided by fifty-seven milliseconds. Okay, so it's always the amount of bits that we send in a duration of time. So for the case of stop and wait, for each 1,000 bits, we have to spend 51 milliseconds in order to send this 1,000 bits. For the case of go back in, for every 7,000 bits, I have to wait for 57 milliseconds. So this is the the actual good put for the case of go back in, and this is the actual good put for the case of uh, uh, stop and wait. Okay. <clears throat>